Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss section 351 or when we are forming a corporation. What happened to the initial contribution of either cash or property? Let's start with a simple example. Let's assume you want to invest in a business. You want to start a business. So what can you do? You can transfer cash to that business and the business will issue stocks, common stocks or some sort of a stock that shows ownership. So let's assume you contributed 10,000 of stock, 10,000 of cash in exchange of stocks. And as a result, you obtain control. And what we mean by control here, you own more than 80% of 80% or more of the company's stocks. That's easy. You contribute 10,000 cash. They gave you the stock. There are no tax consequences to that transaction. Let's change the scenario a little bit. Sometime you don't have cash. So what would you contribute it instead? Well, you can contribute it some sort of a property, a building, a piece of land, maybe, maybe inventory, equipment, it does not matter. How about if you contributed a property with a fair value of 15,000 has an adjusted basis of 10,000 in exchange for the stock. Now, obviously they gave you in, in total $15,000 of stocks because the fair value is 15. But what happened is this, if you disposed of something that has a fair market value of 15 and a $10,000 adjusted basis, guess what you have? You have $5,000 in gain. Now, what do you have to do with this gain? Guess what? If you transfer the property and if you obtain control, a control is defined as 80% and more in, this, in, the, in, the, in the company, then you don't have to recognize the gain. Simply put, the gain is not taxable. So at the time of formation, as long as you contributed property and you obtain control, it doesn't have to be one person. When this transaction happened, you could have one, two, three, four individuals all together. As long together they obtain 80% control, then they are considered one entity. Therefore, taxes don't apply. In other words, the, the taxes on the gain don't apply. So at the time of the formation of a corporation, specifically here we're talking about S, but it could be S, it could be C, the corporation that that not recognize any gain or loss, and you, you don't recognize any gain or loss as long as you meet certain conditions. Now, why these rules apply? So why that's the case? Why the rules are so? Let's think about it. For one thing is, if you obtain stocks in return, can you pay the IRS stocks? And the answer is no. So you don't have the ability to pay. This is called the wherewithal to pay concept. Simply put, what you received is not money. You received stocks. And the IRS, they want their money. Well, you don't have the money, you have stocks. Also, after you contributed the property to the business, the property is still yours. All what happened is there was a continuation of your investment. So you had that piece of property and you transferred it to your business. So it's basically form over substance. You still own the property. You don't own it directly, but you own the company. You have control over the company that owns the property. Therefore, really, your position did not really change. So it's basically form over substance. So that's why you should not be taxed on that gain, at least for now. And also, another reason is Congress wants to encourage business creation. So Congress would like you to create business. So what would they do? They create those rules, which is Section 351, which is corporate formation. When you contributed property to the business and you obtain control, and we're going to define these a little bit more in detail, certain conditions, guess what? There are no tax can no tax consequences as long as certain conditions are met. There are three conditions for Section 351. Let's discuss them. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. The three conditions are, the first one 
is the contribution is made solely in exchange of stock. And here, what we are discussing is the company stock. So they gave you stocks of the company, ownership of the company that you contributed the stock to. Why would that be confusing? Because they could give you stock of another company. Well, that's considered a boot. Basically, you, you are purchasing stock of another company. So a shareholder contributing property does not recognize any gain or loss if the conditions presented below are met. The first one is you contributed and they gave you the company stock. The second condition, the total contribution made by the shareholder or shareholders, it can be one or many shareholders, at the time of the formation constitute at least 80% of the corporate voting stock and 80% of the corporate non-voting stock. What does that mean? It means after that contribution is made, it doesn't have to be one person. It can be a group of people forming the corporation. All of them together, as long as they control more than 80%, it's considered one transaction. Now, do they have to form this corporation all together at the same time, at the same day? It doesn't have to, as long as they coordinated within a specific amount of time, they contributed the, the cash, the property, they control 80%, Everything that they contributed in property, they don't have to recognize the gain on it. Now, it's also important to note that a shareholder contributing services is not considered in the 80% control. Now, you can contribute cash to the company. You can contribute property, which is property could be land, vehicle, uh, land, vehicle, any type of an asset to the company. Or guess what else you can contribute? you can contribute services. What does that mean? Let's assume you are a successful accountant. And what happened is a company will approach you. They'll say, we need, an, we need, a, we need a CPA, but uh, you need to contribute money if you want to be part of our business. And you would say, look, I would like to join your company, but I don't have money to buy stocks. How about I work one year for free and you will give me, I don't know, 10% of the company shares or 15% or whatever that percentage is. Well, that's fine. Services, this individual, that CPA that's joining that new company, their share cannot be counted with the 80%. Also, the services provided is taxable. Simply put, it's as if this CPA work for this new company, the company paid them, let's assume $120,000. Then they took this $120,000 and they contributed back to the company. So the $120,000 is earning for the CPA. So as far as services, services are taxable and they are not counted when you consider the 80% control test because you want to know whether that 80% control test is met and how do you so? How do you do so? You count all the shares relative to the total, and if you have 80% or more, it's 80%, it is controlled. And the third condition is, the shareholder did not receive any boot from the corporation. What is a boot? Well, it means you contributed a property and they gave you cash in return. The boot could be either cash paid to the shareholder or the other thing is considered a boot, is that transferred from the shareholder to the corporation. And that, that is an access of the adjusted basis. So, cash is easy. You contributed a property, they gave you back cash, that's boot. Well, that's it. That's no longer tax-free transaction. How about if you contributed a, a land with a value, with a uh, with a value, with an adjusted basis of uh, 100,000, but, but this land has a notes payable of 120,000. Guess what? You contributed negative 20, really, to the corporation. So you contributed 20,000 in liabilities. Guess what? That 20,000, that's also a boot. So that transfer from a shareholder to the corporation and access of the adjusted basis of his total contributed asset. So this is, this, this is considered a boot. If the shareholder received cash by the corporation, guess what? You would recognize a gain, and the gain will be the lesser of the gain realized from the increase in the property value or the cash received. The lesser of these two will be a taxable amount. Also, if the debt is transferred from the shareholder to the corporation exceeds the adjusted basis, again will be recognized for the access amount. As I showed you, it will be 20,000. Let's take a look at an example. In exchange for 15% ownership interest, John contributed the machinery with a fair value of 15, adjusted basis of 27, to Malik's Inc., which is 
an S corporation. Determine the amount of the gain realized and recognized by John, if any. Well, 50 minus 27, we have a gain of 23,000, realized gain. Is this gain recognized? And the answer is yes. Why? Because after the exchange, John only controlled 15%. Remember, to have that transaction tax-free, you'll have to control 80%. So after the, after the contribution, John did not acquire 80% of the, of the company. So the contribution is treated as a taxable event. And John is required to recognize to recognize the total gain realized of 23,000. Therefore, this gain is taxable, taxable. Let's take a look at the shareholder initial basis. Well, when you start a corporation, the shareholder initial basis is basically what you contributed. Starting with the adjusted basis of the property contributed, if you, if you, if you contributed property, it's the adjusted basis, not the fair market value, plus you might contribute some cash, that's fine, plus fair value of contributed services. Remember the fair value of contributed services because this amount is taxable. It's, you already get taxed on it. If you received any cash back, that's going to reduce your basis. If you contributed liabilities to be assumed by the corporation, that's in minus. And if you recognize any gain from the contribution, you add. Why? Because if you recognize the gain, once you recognize the gain, the gain is taxable. So once you pay taxes on something, that's it. It's going to be part of your basis. And that's why the fair market value of the contributed services, it's already taxable. Therefore, it increases your basis. And therefore, any gain recognized from the contribution is also an increase in your basis. So this is your initial stock basis, initial stock basis. Now, the stock basis of an S corporation does not include any corporate liability. The sh S shareholders have a separate debt basis, which include any direct loan made by the shareholder to the, C to the S corporation. So therefore, the sum of the stock basis and the debt basis constitute the shareholder tax basis. We will explain this later on. This is just an initial, initial, initial examination. Now, what about the S corporation basis and the non-cash property? You contributed the property to the corporation. Now, what is their basis? Well, on the other hand, the corporate basis for a non-cash property acquired is the greater of the shareholder adjusted basis. Remember, the shareholder adjusted basis is used plus any gain he or she recognized on the contribution. He or she recognized on the contribution or that assumed by the corporation less any cash contributed by the shareholder, the greater of these two. Now, let's look at the previous example, the 15% contribution by John, and let's work the example from the corporate perspective. Determine the amount of gain realized and recognized by John, if any, we already did this, 23,000. Determine John's basis in the corporate stock. Well, John basis in the corporate stock equal to 50,000. Why? Because John contributed an asset with an adjusted basis of 27, that's usually what you start with. But also, remember, John paid taxes on the 23,000 on the gain. Therefore, the gain is added to the basis. Therefore, the basis is, and the stock is 50,000. Now, determine Malik's basis and the contributed property, which is the company. Same thing, the company, not same thing, the company, it's gonna be, it's gonna be also 50,000, the adjusted basis plus the gain recognized by the shareholder, 27 plus 23 equal to 50. So this is the basis, the basis of the property contributed inside the corporation. Now what happened to the basis? Does it stay the same? And the answer is not. Basis are subsequently changed. Well, the S corporation basis and the corporate stock is increased by his or her proportionate share of S corporation income item or any additional contribution made by the S corporation. In contrast, it decreases by the opposite, by his or her share of S contribution losses and deduction and by some distribution received from the S corporation. So let's review real quick. Let's start with the initial basis. The initial basis is the adjusted basis contributed plus any cash contributed plus fair market value of services provided minus cash collected minus contributed liability to be assumed by the corporation plus any gain recognized from the contribution. So this is the this is when you start with your initial basis. Then what's going to happen to those initial basis after you start with your initial basis? 
what's going to happen? You're going to have the company is going to generate income. Well, shareholder share of corporate income. It's going to increase your basis. Any dividend, tax, exempt interest, ordinary business income, that's going to increase your basis. If you contributed more money, if you have any additional contribution, it's going to increase your basis. And now the opposite is true. If the corporation incurred losses, you're going to reduce your basis by losses, deductions, and non-deductible expenses. And we'll talk about those a little bit more in details in the next lesson. That's important. Any distribution to shareholder is appropriate. Just like contribution will increase it, just like your contribution will increase your basis, distribution would reduce your basis. And this is how you come up with your ending basis in the corporate stock. Let's take a look at a quick example. On January 1st, Alex contributed 100,000 for an ownership interest of 30% in an existing S corporation. The corporation reported ordinary business income of 30,000 and a dividend of 2,000. Determine Alex basis. Well, we're starting with what? Starting with $100,000. Then the company earned 30,000. Well, that 30,000 belong 30 of 30% 30 of it belongs to Alex, which is 9,000. That's going to increase Alex's basis. The dividend, 30% of it also belongs to Alex. 109,600 is the basis. Again, this is dividend income, not expense. So this is basically a quick overview. What should you do now? Go to Farm Hat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, true false, that's going to help you understand this topic. This topic is important. We're only going to be expanding on this topic, basis, contribution, so on and so forth. Make sure you understand this inside out. So Section 351, which is S Corporation or C Corporation formation, is an important topic, whether you are a CPA candidate or an enrolled agent student. Or, of, of course, if you're an accountant student as well. Study hard, invest in your career, and good luck.